fly. This is the electricity transformer for this community. It supplies and power this community with electricity. Without this, all community will be in total darkness. How beautiful it is when there is light. You can cook, you can sing, you can do so many things. You can recharge your phone and power your gadgets. That is very important. Or you take this transformer to supply everybody the electricity they need. Without it, you and I know that everybody will be in total darkness. You see, the same way the only community, we transformer to power the community, we also need power in our marriage. Without power, marriages will be in trouble. Many marriages are in trouble. Many marriages are in shambles. We can blame the devil. We can blame our spouses. We can blame anybody. In fact, many people do blame God for the state of their marriages. Some may say they mismarry. Some may say uh, it is the enemy from the village. But the truth is, the reason why your marriage is suffering today is because there is no power in your marriage. I will be telling you more about this. I will be opening your eyes to how to power your marriage shortly. Just sit down, call your friends, tell them that we're on air because we are bringing another dimension to family life. You need to learn how to power your marriage. I will be back shortly. Family Lifeline. You are welcome back. I will be talking about 16 ways to power your marriage. You see, powering your marriage is very, very important. And the first thing to do if you want to power your marriage is to get wisdom. Wisdom, the Bible says, is the principal thing. Among your gettings, get understanding. You've got to get wisdom. Wisdom is when you use knowledge. Uh, learning is useless if it's not put into action. But when learning turns into action, we call it wisdom. If learning is bang or stored we call it knowledge and knowledge is useless if it's not put into action that is why you need to get wisdom get knowledge and use it then you are wise wisdom is the power behind every successful marriage you need wisdom number two read books quality books you see if you want a great marriage you should read at least one book about marriage every month if you want a great marriage. Many of you are proud of yourselves in the fact that I've been married for 30 years, 15 years, 20 years. But if your marriage has been that old and you've not been getting new knowledge, that means your marriage is obsolete. If you are not reading books, you are not improving yourself, your marriage will soon be in trouble. Do you know that some people have been married for 25 years and it has been 25 years of battle, turbulence. They've been veteran of many battles in their marriages. I think I need to inform you that there is better way to go about it. Read quality books, quality books. I've been privileged to write more than 100 books on marriage. Go to familabooks.com. You will see a lot of books you need to read. Number three, attend marriage seminars. Attend marriage enrichment programs. You can't know everything. 
you need to be taught. No matter the age of your marriage, if you are not married, attend a singles related programs. For example, I hold a program every last Sunday of the month at Lagos Airport Hotel by 2 p.m. and it's free. You need to attend these kind of programs regularly so that your knowledge about marriage will not be obsolete. You, you see, the world is moving fast. You need to do the cash up. Don't think you know it all. You know nothing until you are getting the best. And the best you are getting today will not be the best for tomorrow. That is why you need to keep on getting knowledge, acquiring knowledge. Marriage is like a career. You need to keep on learning on the job so that you can be the best. Number four, stand united with your spouse. There is power in unity, stronger together, better together, stronger together, better together, faster together. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Let there be unity in your marriage. If your marriage will last long, then you need to do it together. Marriage is like a table tennis game. You can't play it alone. You need to work with your partner to play it. Marriage is a teamwork. Work together in your team so that you will not war in your team. So stand united. That is the secret of a successful marriage. Family Lifeline. Family Lifeline. Another way to power your marriage. This is the fifth one. Pray for your spouse. A lot of women are praying for their husbands. But most husbands are not praying for their wives. So what do you supposed to do? Pray regularly. Don't allow the devil to use your wife, your husband against you. Pray. 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 Go down on your knees. If your wife is doing, if, doing well, if your husband is doing well, that is when he need or he should need prayer. If the person is not doing well, he or she needs more prayer. To power your marriage, you must pray for your spouse. Another thing you must do is to pray with your spouse. Don't just pray for your spouse, but you must pray with him or her. There is this power that you generate when you stand together in prayers. No matter what the battle you are confronting, if you can pray for each other and pray with each other, the power of the Lord will descend down upon you and you will be able to conquer all battles. Another thing you need to do, this is number seven, is to pray for your marriage regularly. Many people pray, pray for their career, they pray for their children, they pray for their health, they never pray for their marriage. Oh, what a mistake. You need to pray for your sex life in that marriage. Pray for sex? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you didn't know that devil likes premarital sex. Devil likes extramarital sex. But devil hates marital sex. That's the reason why you are fighting in the bedroom. Why is it that suddenly sex in your marriage is no more, is no more pleasurable? Husband and wife, they kept on fighting third world war in the middle of the night. Pray for your marriage. In, when you are praying for your marriage, you pray for your love life, you pray for your sex life, you pray for unity, you pray for understanding, you pray for your communication. <laughs> it's a real work. But if you do the work, there will be no one in your marriage. Number eight, put conflict to bed quickly. There's a way conflict destroys everything that is called unity in marriage. Unity, harmony turning matrimony to matriagony. Then you lose the power in that marriage. Very dangerous. What are you supposed to do? Put conflict to bed. Sit down and talk about it. Don't fight about it, but talk about it. And you get the best result in your marriage. Number nine, 
be intentional. You didn't get married by accident. You can't run your money by accident. Be intentional in communication. Be intentional in playing together. Be intentional in dating each other. Be intentional in eating together. Be intentional settling disputes. Be intentional talking about money. Be intentional talking about sex. Be intentional talking about future. Be intentional talking about each other. Be intentional talking about marriage enrichment and improvement. Be intentional about your vacation. Be intentional about your sex life. Be intentional. Marriage is intentional. Don't put your marriage in autopilot. This is one of the major problems of marriage. Many people, they thought their marriage should run on its own. It doesn't happen that way. Intentionality, being deliberate, is the key to the success of anything. Nothing happens by itself. You can't get corn in your garden without planting it. The only thing that will happen in that garden without you planting it will be weed. So be intentional about your marriage. Number uh, 10, be totally transparent. Be open. Be vulnerable to your spouse. Be predictable. Let your wife be able to predict where you, you will be. Let your husband be able to predict where you, you are at any point in time. You see, marriage is not a lone ranger relationship. Marriage is a unity. It involves two people who are ready to let go, who are ready to open up, who are ready to be friends of each other, to befriend each other, to work together in the same direction. Though you are different, but listen to me, marriage involves two people looking together in the same direction via the same window that is what will make your marriage work so be transparent nothing hidden nothing secretive open your dark rooms open your store remove code from that phone remove those codes from your phones what are you hiding if there must be code on your phone like many of you say i want to put code on my phone because of my children fine that is good i usually use code when our children were younger but you see what my wife will even determine what the code will be i knew hers she knew my own but nowadays i don't even put any code again so if you have nothing to hide why are you hiding your phone why are you hiding so be totally transparent Eleventh way to power your marriage is to get help from the right source. Get help from the right source and at the right time. Statistics shows that most couples will wait for six years before they seek help. Some will never seek help at all. The problem is, by the time you seek help after six years of turbulence, the marriage is already in, in, in shambles. Many, many wrong things must have happened in your marriage. So seek help, not from your FFF. Who are the FFFs? Your friends, your family, and your, and your fans. Your friends will always be by your side. They will always support you even if you are stupid. They won't see it. Your family we always be by your side because of the blood relationship between you. They will not even sit down to hear from your spouse. They will support you blindly. Your fans, they are not even, they, they won't even find time to listen to anybody because they won't even go all the way to listen to the other party. So FFF are the wrong people to talk to, but talk to a professional counselor, a trained counselor people that are not attached to you by blood by anything people that will tell you what you don't want to hear and get you the result that you need so if you want to power your marriage get help from the right source and at the right time number 12 talk like business partners do you want power in your marriage 
talk the way business partners normally talk. How do they talk? Business partners will not wait for trouble before they discuss. They sit down, they hold regular meetings. Couples should hold regular meetings. Planning about their sex life, planning about their future, planning about their marriages, planning about their children, planning. Don't wait until you, until you are fighting about money before you talk about it. Plan how much will be coming in. What shall we do with it when it's coming? Our next salary, where should it go to? How should we dispense it? This will eliminate financial issues from your marriage. Likewise, talk about sex. Likewise, talk about your children, in-laws. There are 19 departments of marriage. You need to deliberately talk about this 19 department. We call it departmental marriage. Talk about them. Number 13, play like children. If you are always playing like children, your marriage will be very strong and powerful. So play. Take your time to play. Don't turn your marriage to a battlefield. Be playful. Hold hands. Hug each other. Play with each other. <laughs> Do you know that the more we grow, the less we play? And this is very dangerous. And relationships supposed to be about playing. If you are not playing, you will soon be fighting if you are not already fighting. Number 14, be faithful to your spouse. Be faithful. Be totally faithful, no matter what. Be faithful financially. Be faithful sexually. Be faithful with your words. Be predictable. Be vulnerable. That's what marriage is all about. When you said, I do, you actually meant, I do to open up to you, I do to be your best friend, I do to be honest with you, I do to be open to you, I do to be faithful to you, I do to be just, I do to love you, I do to be intimate, I do to be yours forever. Keep dating your spouse is number 15. If you want the best in your marriage, you want power for that marriage, dating continues. If you stop dating in your marriage, your marriage will soon be out of date. Out with your wife. Spend time together. Some people will say, oh, but I don't have money. You don't need money to date. If you are proud of her, take her out. If you are proud of him, go out with him. Hand in hands, take strolls, even on your street, go into a garden, into a park, into e trees, go out, go and do things together. That's what marriage is all about. You see, there are some decisions you will make in time when you are playing, when you are dating each other, that will not cause crisis. But when you are saying them at home, it will be as if you are fighting battles and it may destroy your marriage. So keep dating, keep playing, be faithful. Number 16, make your bedroom better. Make your bedroom life better. This is very important. Bedroom is the strong room of marriage. When bedroom coll collapses, marriage will not be able to, to stand. Marabe Morgan said, if marriage is the rock, the rock is in the mattress. If marriage is the rock, the rock is in the mattress. I think I agree totally with this. If your marriage collapses, first, let's check the bedroom. Uh, I read a report from the United Nations some few weeks ago. They said Africans normally spend about 40 minutes on sexual relationship. They said, but about 40 minutes of those, about 43 minutes, the husband will, will spend begging. Wow! It's a very serious report, and we need to check, we need to go and check it very well. That is why I have about three books on this particular sexual relationship in marriage. I will encourage you to go and get them. One of them is Secret of an Irresistible Wife. Secret of an Irresistible Husband and Sexual Fulfillment in Marriage. Go and get these three books. 
sit down and read them. Your marriage will suddenly turn around. You can download them quickly now on familiarbooks.com. Familiarbooks.com. Download them now and explode your marriage. Make it says fun in your marriage. Don't make it funny. Don't make your marriage to be afflicted because of sexual relationship. Your marriage can be better if you can put all these 16 things into your marriage and your marriage will be powered. Thank you for listening to me today. It's been busy at Dewale. Remember, your family is very important. Take good care of your marriage. Family Lifeline